Welcome back everyone to Redstone with Ripper and today's episode is most likely going to be a shorter one but also a very important one because we are going over possibly two of the most important circuits in Redstone circuitry and they are the RS NOR latch or the set reset latch in um, more general terms and the T flip flop latch so without any further ado let's get into it. Alright guys, so as I mentioned, this is the RS NOR latch, very, very popular circuit, very, very important circuit. Uh, in more general terms, it is a set reset latch, so an SR latch. Um, and basically, what it means, if you're not familiar with it, is that you can, um, you, you have two buttons in this circuit. One will set the circuit, and the other will reset the circuit. So, if we say designate this this line, the powered line, the line that's currently powered, as our as our line that we're using to power things. So we'll get and we'll grab a redstone lamp. So it's currently on. It is in the set position. If we want to reset it to off, we only have to hit this button. And this line will get turned to off. And we can see this line turns on as well. So if we want to set it back to the on state, we can see... This button does absolutely nothing. We can't do anything with this button. The only button that will work to set it back is this one. And we can see it sets it back. And then in turn, this button now longer does now no longer does anything. And yeah, we have to use this button to set it. So it forms this really nice cycle in which you can just set, reset as long as you want. Just like this. And yeah, it's a very, very important circuit. It's used in a lot of applications, say uh, farms. Um, I can't think of any other circuits. Uh, yeah, uh, farms, you can use it for doors that you can walk through and then reset it on the other side. There are plenty and plenty of uses for this latch. Uh, but mostly they're used to form the basis of another circuit, which is the T flip-flop, uh, circuit. And we'll get to that in a sec. Um, I want to show you a few designs of the RS null latch first. So I've got three different RS null setups here and basically... It has three different setups, and they kind of, I didn't mean it, but they kind of guide you through the history of Redstone, I guess. So, the first RS NOR latch is this one here, and basically, this is your absolutely basic one. So, you hit this button, it will set it to that state. You hit the other button, it will reset it to the other state, with obviously the button you just pressed not doing anything. This is the most basic way you can build them with just uh, Redstone and Redstone dust, uh, Redstone and torches, should I say dust and torches uh and yeah this has been used for oh, what how long has minecraft been around three years that's how long this one's been used it is so so old this is absolutely old school classic rs and all latch so that's very very basic just make sure it's torch three dust torch three dust um i pretty much have this like committed to memory so uh yeah that's the first one uh when the piston update came along we actually got an even more basic way to do it so we just hit this and all we've got is two normal pistons pushing a block back and forth. And that's your output line with a redstone torch below it. And very, very simple as you can see. So this counts as a set reset latch. Uh, it's not technically an RS NOR because an RS NOR, uh, you have to have torches in there. But yeah, very, very simple. And uh, yeah, you can also do it with... I, I'll have to grab a redstone block. There we go. Just chuck a redstone block there. You can get rid of this. That and yeah, this makes it even more simple. So you can just push the redstone block back and forth. So it's very, very simple. And uh, yeah, when the uh, 1.5 redstone update came along, we got an even more simpler way to do it. So we've got two droppers here and they're facing into each other. So one dropper facing that way and this dropper facing that way. And with the way droppers work, they when they uh, fire an item and they are facing into another dropper or a hopper for that matter... Uh, actually, I think a chest will work as well. So anything that holds an item, pretty much, they will actually put the item into that um, entity or block. So what we've got here is an item in the right dropper, no item in the left dropper. So, of course, <laughs> what do we do? We just power this dropper and it fires the item into the next one, forming an extremely simple, and I mean extremely simple, set reset uh, latch. So... This is the most basic way to do it as of I'm recording this. I don't think they will actually make a better way than this unless they actually make a block that is a set reset latch. 
Um, although I guess the lever does serve that function, doesn't it? So it's very, very simple. And that is pretty much your your set reset circuit or your RS NOR latch. And uh, yeah, they're a very, very basic concept. I don't know why people make a big fuss about, about them because they're not hard at all to do. Very, very simple. But the uh, harder one, the slightly harder one, it's actually not too much more complicated, but the slightly harder one is, of course, the T flip-flop latch, which kind of serves as an RS NOR latch, except with a single button, of course. So it is actually much more widely used than this, and because of that, we are going to be covering it right now. So as I mentioned, the T flip-flop is essentially a set-reset latch, except you control it with one button. So basically, you have one button to toggle it on, and, what, and the same button will toggle it back off. So it's called a T flip-flop because it is a toggle flip-flop. There are a couple of other types of flip-flops uh, circuits that aren't as useful as the T flip-flop. The T flip-flop is pretty much the most useful one. There are also stuff like uh, D flip-flops and JK flip-flops. I'm not going to go into any of them today. I'm not going to confuse you guys. We're just going to stick with the basic one that everyone's familiar with. Um, and yeah, the first time I actually went over the T flip-flop circuit back in uh, Redstoning with Steve, I went over the really huge uh, T flip-flop circuit, which covered, if you take the area of all these circuits together, it probably covered, covers that area. The absolute classic one. If you want to go back and see me do that, make sure you go check out Redstoning with Steve. I'm not going to cover it again because it's just stupid. It took me forever and I don't want to do it again. Uh, so we're going to cover a few simple designs today that again kind of step through history not not as much because we've got the locked repeaters here but i'm going to cover these three circuits uh the three tip flip t flip flop circuits each with their own design flaws and advantages and uh yeah we'll start with this one and as you can see it looks like a bit of a mess but we'll try and understand it here so we've got a button dust torch to this repeater now this repeater is actually locking this repeater here now, to understand this, we're actually going to remove this repeater. And as you can see, this is actually forming a clock. So we can see our output, which is our redstone lamp, of course, is actually flashing on and off. And only when we put this repeater in, does it stop the flashing. So what is this T flip-flop doing? Basically, when you hit the button, I want you to watch the clock carefully. And you can see the clock actually went through a full cycle before settling on the off state. So watch the redstone lamp this time. You can actually see the redstone lamp flicks on, then off, then back on. And then it'll flick off and then off again. So it acts as a T flip-flop with an obvious disadvantage of your, of your output will actually flicker, which is pretty undesirable in most cases. But uh, yeah, it's just a thing with the timing because with the stone button, uh, it basically allows the clock to stay off long enough for it to toggle through. Now, I haven't tested this with a wooden button. I will, just to satisfy you guys. And let's see if it actually still works. Okay, so it does seem to still work, but it actually does an extra cycle. Uh, so that's just a bit of a quirk. If there were to be an input length long enough for the clock to cycle through back to... Say this repeater was on, and our input length was long enough for the clock to cycle back, then the repeater turns on, and then it gets locked again. So basically, the, the effect that the input just stays on all the time, it obviously wouldn't function as a T flip-flop. So it just so happens that these, these button lengths make it function as a T flip-flop. So it's a bit of a lucky quirk with the timings. So that's a very simple one. It only uses redstone and smooth stone to build. That's it. Oh, and I guess sticks. <laughs> but it's pretty much all redstone to build. Uh, but the next design is one that I like to use more. This one is my personal favorite. Uh, although I am kind of, I kind of have a thing for pistons. They're kind of my favorite thing to use generally. So what we have here is a, it's actually a rising edge trigger. We will cover rising edge and falling edge triggers in a later episode, but not for now. All you need to know at this stage is that uh, input to uh, a piston, uh, sorry, a piston, a repeater uh, with delay one going into the block, a repeater with delay two going into the piston. So basically, we covered this last episode over there. Uh, it will send a one tick pulse through the block because this gets activated after one tick and then the piston starts pushing after two ticks. So this block will stay powered for exactly 2 minus 1 equals 1 tick. 
Now this one tick pulse will basically allow this sticky piston to push the block but it won't pull it back because of the quirk with pistons where they wish when they receive a one tick impulse they will actually leave their block out. So we can see as such it will actually just leave the block hanging out there. And it will obviously work in the reverse direction as well. So this is the one I generally use and I've got a bit of old school stuff happening here with the iron door. I don't think anyone uses these anymore. I don't think I've built an iron door, oh, not forever. So yeah, this is all it does. And yeah, I've got the uh, torch under the block there. Uh, redstone block won't work in this case because it's next to the piston. Uh, so we've just got the torch there. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not hard to build at all. Just like that. Very, very easy. And yeah, as I said, this is my personal favorite. I love using this one. I use it all the time. But say you didn't want a piston one, say you thought this one was a bit unreliable, you didn't want pistons being too noisy, well we've got the very very ultra modern design here and this is the uh, dropper hopper one and I've used this in a couple of designs lately, mostly because it's very easy to fit in a vertical space and it's very compact. Basically we have hoppers and droppers forming a cycle here. So you can see this dropper is pointing into the hopper, this hopper is funneling down to this dropper, this dropper is facing that way into this dropper and this last dropper is actually facing upwards into this dropper. So you can see they form a cycle in the square there. Now we've got an item in, where is it? This dropper here. Now what this button does is actually power this dropper of course, but it actually powers these two droppers as well just because uh, with the button when you power a block, droppers next to the block, so I'll actually show an example. And we'll put a block in there. It's forming this thing, so we can actually see it will shoot that out. And because a dropper is a conductive block, it will work exactly the same way. So we'll shift click a button onto there, place another block in there, and you can see it works exactly the same way. It will still shoot the block out. So that's the kind of uh, quirk it's using. And basically what this will do is it will fire the block into there and then this dropper will actually fire as well into the hopper and then it will just funnel the uh, the block down into this dropper. So let's see it in action. And you can see it's funneled into this dropper. Then when we activate it again, it gets fired into this dropper. Uh, sometimes, depending on what orientation you build it, it can get fired into this dropper, but it doesn't matter, it still has the same effect overall. Now all you have to do is just power this block in this case, so you can use a repeater. I believe dust will work as well. We'll see if it does. Yes, it does, so excellent. And yeah, as you can see, this is the very, very ultra compact, ultra modern design. Uh, when uh, hoppers and droppers were introduced in the 1.5 update. So that's about it for the designs, guys. Alright guys, so that just about wraps it up for set, reset, and T flip flop circuits. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode, and be sure to get down the bottom there, leave a like if you want, leave a comment as well. Um, I'd love to hear back from you guys about this series. Uh, make sure, if you want to see something in the series, make sure you leave the comment. I've actually already got an idea from a couple of episodes back, or well, it's last episode or episode before, about a future episode in which I can do and will do. Uh, I can't remember what the topic was, but I remember I wrote it down somewhere. And yeah, I, I just like to hear from you guys. So I love my comments. I respond to pretty much every comment. So yeah, get down there and yeah, that's... I like to have a chat to you guys. So yeah, as I said, hope you enjoyed. Check the world download. It will be in the description if you want to come and have a look at these things uh, nice and up close. And yeah, apart from that, hope you enjoyed once again. And I'll catch you next time, guys. See you later.